Hi everyone, welcome back to my weekly meal plan. In this episode, each week I share what I'm having on my recipe, um, on my meal plan for my family for the upcoming week. Um, anything that is shared here as far as recipes um, that come from a specific website, you can find on my, on my website at lolasfrugallife.com. Like I include a link um, to any recipes that are mentioned that come from a specific website so that you can follow that exact recipe if you want to. Um, this meal plan is only for dinners and I do rotate my meals on a regular basis so it's not always new recipes. Um, it's usually not new recipes. I do throw in something new every once in a while um, but I kind of follow the same similar type recipes and rotate meals on a regular basis just to make meal planning easier and I think meal planning is important for saving money and wasting less food so to me it's more about just knowing what I'm going to make rather than always trying new things um, unless I do have the time and energy to do that. So this week's meal plan starts on Saturday, April 30th. So this Saturday we are going to be doing Jenny O's Best Ever Meatloaf. That's from allrecipes.com. This is a turkey meatloaf. Um, I'm sure you could make it with ground beef also, but it's it's from the brand Jenny O, which is like a turkey um, meat, you know, a turkey uh, company. <laughs> and then um, this is just the recipe that I've always been making as my kids grew up, so that's what we always have. And then we're just going to be doing shells and cheese on the side with that. I'll probably throw in a vegetable, like just a frozen one, but I didn't actually put that on my meal plan because I was kind of in a hurry this week. Um, but sometimes we'll just skip the vegetable and just do the turkey meatloaf and the shells and cheese. So for Sunday, I'm going to be doing a new recipe, um, which is pesto chicken penne casserole. And this is from tasteofhome.com. So I had been making another pesto chicken penne recipe that I just made um, yesterday actually. Um, well, when I'm recording this, I made it yesterday. So it's kind of similar to this, but this is more like a casserole that bakes in the oven. And I think it has, um, it does have mozzarella cheese on it. So, and like Alfredo sauce. So it, it, I think it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to give that a try and see how that comes out and how it compares to the other recipe. If it's really similar, then maybe I'll just kind of alternate them, you know, back and forth once in a while. And if it's not as similar, then I can make it more often. Uh, but we're going to try that one and see how that comes out. And then I was just going to do a bagged salad on the side with that. Um, just like, you know, the kind you buy at the grocery store that comes with the, the dressing and the toppings and everything in the bag. Um, for Monday, we're doing steak. Um, ribeye steak is what I usually make. Um, I do that once a month. Every like four weeks, we have steak on a Monday. So for that, I don't have a recipe. I just put the steak in a Ziploc bag with some Montreal steak seasoning and some olive oil and red wine and vinegar. And then I just marinate it. And then when it's time to cook, I throw it under the broiler until it's done. But you do have to be really careful with steak under the broiler, especially if there's it's got a lot of fat in it. Um, because I almost caught my oven on fire one time cooking a steak too close too close to the broiler and the fat popped up and hit the flame and it was pretty scary. So just be careful if you are doing steak under the broiler to make sure that you keep an eye on it and then you have enough distance. But now that it's getting um, warmer out, I'll most likely just throw that on the grill. And then for sides, I'm going to be doing air fryer roasted cauliflower and broccoli, which is from allrecipes.com. For this one, I buy either cauliflower or broccoli. I kind of mix it up each time I make it because um, my family just wouldn't eat an entire um, head of cauliflower and broccoli. It would just be too much and I wouldn't really have anything to do with the extra half of head and cauliflower and broccoli that would be left over. So um, I just do one or the other. And then I'm also going to be making mushroom rice with this, which is from Budget Bites, um, B-Y-T-E-S dot com, um, which I've kind of been making this as a side dish a lot recently. Um, pretty much what you do is you just like saute up some mushrooms in butter and then you add the rice and vegetable broth and you just let it simmer until it all cooks together. So I've been liking that lately. That one is from, oh, I said that already, from budgetbites.com. For Tuesday, we always do some type of Mexican theme. So we're gonna be doing um, chicken, chicken chimichangas with sour cream sauce, which is from allrecipes.com. I've never made the sour cream sauce that goes with this recipe. I just put regular sour cream on the side and I'll put out like some salsa to go with the chimichangas. Um, and then I will be serving that with a bagged salad again. Oh, with the um, chicken for the chicken chimichangas, what I wind up doing is I cook the chicken 
in the Instant Pot rather than boiling it in water, and it's just so easy um, to do that way. So I, I forget the exact, I don't wanna say, but I think it's like 10 minutes on high pressure with, um, it's like a cup or two of water, like for one chicken breast, and then I think you let it sit for 10 minutes. But if you just do a search on chicken breast in the Instant Pot, you'll find something to tell you how to cook it. And I just find it so much easier than boiling it in water because I'm never quite sure if it's done, how long to cook it. it, I don't know. I just, to me, it's just a pain in the neck. I don't like cooking chicken like that in boiling water. So um, I find the Instant Pot method to be really um, easy and convenient. So that's that. So then for Wednesday, we do seafood every Wednesday. So this Wednesday we're doing fried flounder. Um, I think I've been doing I was doing fried, fried, bleh, fried flounder every two weeks, but I think I'm kind of changing the rotation a little bit where I'm thinking I'm adding in another thing into the mix. So I think it's gonna be like fried flounder every three weeks, but whatever, we have fried flounder kind of often. So I don't have a recipe for this. I just buy the frozen um, flounder fillets and I defrost them and then um, dip them in egg and breadcrumb and then just fry them up in a frying pan. And then on the side, we're gonna do easy rice baked casserole, which is from foodnetwork.com. So this kind of has everything in it. It's got like spinach and egg and milk and, and rice and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just do the one side dish and that kind of covers vegetable and rice and everything all in one. <laughs> so that is for Wednesday. For Thursday, on Thursdays is when I go food shopping. So we either do like soup and grilled cheese or breakfast for dinner. So this week we're gonna do breakfast for dinner. So I'm gonna do scrambled eggs and I'm gonna do turkey bacon in the oven, which is from brended.com. Um, the turkey bacon in the oven, it's just a method of cooking it in the oven. It's not really like a recipe, but I always cook it that way in the oven now. You could do it with regular bacon too. It's just so much easier than cooking it up in a frying pan. Um, so that's just how I make it now. And then I'm also gonna be doing um, home fried potatoes in the air fryer, which I don't have a recipe for, but I just basically dice up potatoes, peppers, and onions and toss them with a little olive oil and then cook them in the air fryer until they're um, like whatever doneness, you know, that, that, that we're looking for. Then the last meal on the meal plan is Friday, May 6th. We're gonna be doing sausage and peppers for a dozen. That's from allrecipes.com. So this really is a recipe um, to make sausage and peppers that you would then make um, sausage and sausage and pepper sandwiches with. But I just make the sausage and peppers um, to use as a side dish, kind of. And then I'm just gonna be making big ziti on the side. Well, not on the side, sorry. The sausage and peppers is the side dish, I guess, kind of. It's it's kind of like both, but whatever. I'm making the big ziti also, which is um, the recipe I use is called big ziti two, like Roman numeral two, and that's from allrecipes.com. And what I do is the sausage and peppers will just cook all day, and then when it's closer to dinner time, I'll make the big ziti, and then we just serve the big ziti with the sausage. So that is the last um, meal for this week's meal plan. So don't forget, um, each week when this meal plan comes out, at the same time, I also post a blog post on my website at lolasfrugallife.com, which includes links to any of the recipes that I mentioned in this um, episode. So that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Um, don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. And you can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. If you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would really love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I can see you're listening. Also, if you could take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, that would be really helpful to me. Those ratings and reviews really make a big difference in helping the show come up more favorably in search results. Also, if you're interested, there's a link to financially support the podcast in the episode details. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.